Hey, what's up you guys? It's Simon. Welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, we are clearly doing a Meet the Artist. I'm not gonna go like too in-depth, I suppose, about things that are about me or um, my art or anything of the sort just because I'm also filming a Q&A that's going to be going up next week but I've never done a meet the artist before and I figured with a new year and a new decade that now is the time to finally get one of those done so here it is um so for the drawing obviously it is me um i drew myself in one of my favorite outfits it's like this big chunky knit sweater because i'm chunky and i don't like it when you can see my tummy so i always wear these like huge massive like sweaters and hoodies and stuff like that number one because they're comfy cozy but number two because again you can't see my tummy if like you can't figure out what any shape of my body is so there is that um i also have like these little black like polka dot polka dot <laughs> polka dot shorts they're basically just pjs and i love them um i also am doing like a little like what's in my bag type thing in the corner i'll get to that in a minute but now i'm gonna start off with um oh forgot um underneath my at name obviously i see um a lot of people that put like their age and their zodiac sign and their whatever so um i don't know if it's on screen yet but for those of you that are into that sort of thing like astrology and like identities and stuff like that um, I am 20 years old. I am an Aries. I will be turning 21 actually this April, so that's going to be fun. Um, I think I also put like an American and a bi flag there because I'm an American and I'm bi, <laughs> I guess. Um, and what else did I- oh, I put that I'm 411 on there because I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm very, very, very tiny and it is very, very, very I'm four foot eleven. I'm going to be 21 years old. I'm never gonna get any taller. I'm stuck. This is where I am forever. A child. I can't. I hate it. I hate it. So, um, getting into my likes and dislikes. They're a little dorky, but that's because I am also a little dorky and also because I was struggling trying to refrain from things that have already been asked in the Q&A. So I just put some stuff that I, um, didn't have questions for at the time but also liked very much <laughs> so my first like is obviously my husband because he's my best friend we are gonna be together for eight years in the fall so that's really cool um he, yeah he's he's my best friend basically so i had to put him first because i love him um the next thing i have on there is ready because oh my god um back in october you guys know i was going to be staying uh, or like doing some sort of thing for my friend's birthday party and I thought we were going to be going to see It Chapter 2 in theaters and I told them right before we left the day of I was like if we're going to It Chapter 2 um here's the thing I've never seen It and they were like what because it came out when we were in high school in 2017 it's two years later seven three years later two years later Two years later I, I i can't do math i haven't been in school okay it's i graduated i'm done so uh it's it's been some years since it came out and i haven't seen it um so i watched it that day twice and i was like hmm i don't really like this movie and then we didn't end up going to see it chapter two so after our little uh birthday thing was over i went home and i was like I turned to my husband and was like, do you want to watch It Chapter 2? And he was like, okay. So we watched It Chapter 2 and I was like, oh no, I really like It Chapter 2. And also, I think I love Eddie Kasbrack. So I've been making a lot of ready fan art and we'll continue to do so. Um, <laughs> a little bit off topic, but, uh, or not, it's not technically off topic, but I'm rambling this week. So here, uh, is a story. Um, obviously, as you guys know, I've been doing a lot of ready fan art on my Instagram. I did for a solid, like, every other day in November, I was making it comics. Um, and then at one point I stopped because I had this super cool plan and you guys saw, like, a whip of it. 
but uh oh man i wanted to do like a painting thing with a gift a gif why can't i speak a painting with like a little gif in there because um i thought it would be super cool i was listening to frozen in the shower and it gave me an idea and i was very excited to paint it um however i thought i broke my tablet until I realized during Christmas when I was cleaning my uh, room, my tablet was not broken. The only reason my pen wasn't working was because I was using the wrong tablet pen. I did that for a solid two weeks. I was like, my tablet won't work. I uninstalled the driver. I reinstalled it. I reverted back to a previous Windows and it still didn't work. And then once I realized... I was using the wrong pen my life. I I was so sad. I was literally so angry and so sad and so just like I went full feral at the time. I could not believe that I did something so stupid for so long, but it's fixed. So ready is coming soon. <laughs> Anyways, so the next thing I have is Naruto and um not to be a weeb or anything, but I've been watching Naruto since I was seven years old and it legally has to be on this list because it is a pivotal part of both my childhood and adulthood. Um, when I was seven, I literally wore like Naruto headbands to school, so... If you know me in real life, I'm really sorry. But also, I'm not sorry, because as soon as I got a job with my own money, I went on Amazon and I bought a headband again. So, yeah, I guess I'm I'm not that sorry, because I still wear my headbands, but I don't wear them in public, because I'm not a weirdo, but I think about it sometimes. <laughs> and uh, the next final dorky aspect, I suppose, of this um, likes portion is I put Loki in all caps and spaced apart, because last night I was thinking about this rumor I heard in the MCU that they're thinking about replacing Tom Hiddleston and doing um, some sort of arc where he gets stuck as a child, and I was feeling some stuff about it, <laughs> because I love Loki. Um, I was late to the Marvel MCU party, obviously. I'd seen some movies, but foolish, foolish me. I, I basically started with Endgame and was like, this is so good. And then I had to backtrack and watch the whole MCU. I'd probably seen Captain America, uh, only Civil War and Winter Soldier, not the first Captain America, because I'm a fool. Um, all of the Iron Man movies, because my little cousin was obsessed with it. And then... Uh, the first like 15 minutes of the first Thor movie and I was like okay I, I guess these are the yeah these are fine and then I saw Endgame and I was like I love everybody I'm sobbing I don't understand why is this what I gotta go watch all of the movies so I started with Thor because there were a lot of um, uh, Thor references in Endgame. I think I talked about this a little in my Ibis paint video because I drew Thor in it but uh I started with Endgame, basically, and then went back to Thor and then just watched the whole MCU. So I love Loki. He's my baby. And I don't know how I feel about this whole child Loki idea. I really don't. But we'll see. Maybe maybe it'll be interesting. I don't know. Enough rambling. I'm going to um, mash the last five things together. So doodling, making videos, planning things, uh, cheese, my cats, and you guys are all uh, very similar and very important things. So I talked a little bit about um, how I have so many videos planned out in my, uh, I think it's my New Year's resolution video. And I obviously like planning things out because it makes me more creative, it makes me stay consistent, it gives me more ideas, and I feel like I have the time to like focus and be more creative when I can see that, oh, this is the date that I need to do this and this is when I need to do this. I just like structure. And obviously doodling and making videos and you guys all come together because that's what I'm planning for, making videos for you guys of my art 
there we go and then cheesing my cats i just love i just love cheesing my cats <laughs> like they're my babies one of my cats is actually only to me to everybody else he's named something different but to me um he's named loki he's very handsome he's big and chonky he's half mancoon and he's got beautiful green eyes and i love him and he's a big fat boy and then i have a daughter um not a not a child i don't have a child but i have a kitty child um you guys have seen her on twitter she's that little calico her name is ginger and she is baby she's probably about she might be like 11 years old right now but she she's baby like she does not act like she's 11 she's the cutest thing ever and i love her so my dislikes i'm gonna rush through because the i i'm gonna be honest with you guys this is the second time i recorded this voiceover and the first time i made myself anxious because i started talking about how much i don't like these things so getting through them very quickly i don't like clowns as if you couldn't tell by my love of the it movies um I didn't like clowns before I saw it, and then after I saw it, clowns were so much worse. I hate clowns, can't stand them. Spiders. Also, it, if you've seen it, chapter two. But also, I have always hated spiders to a um, ridiculous degree. A spider could be a millimeter wide, and I, I would scream and cry and beg you to get it away from me. I would jump across the room, and I know that's dramatic. I know you might be thinking, like, Simon, spiders are more afraid of you than you are of them, and you're wrong. You're, you're so wrong. It's not true. That's not true. Spiders fear nothing. Um, it was 2014 a summer night. It was beautiful out. I was just laying in bed, minding my own business, and I felt something on my arm, and I figured, like, oh, I'm just itchy, you know, like, uh, the, my blanket rustled or something, whatever, so I went to go and scratch my arm. <sighs> there was a huge spider just on my arm just crawling up like it was nobody's business and I was like okay I threw the spider off I grabbed the nearest blanket that I could easily tell was not touching the, sp the spider I still picked it up and like shook it out and made sure that the spider was not in there and I camped out in my living room for a solid two weeks until I was convinced that either the spider was dead or gone or somewhere else in the house or out of the house it wasn't a good two weeks <laughs> um so the next thing is the dark and that is kind of um a, a little bit babyish i must admit i'm 21 years or, or not 21 yet i'm 20 years old i'm scared of the dark um, for good reason. My mom, my mother tells me that our house is haunted. She says that she's seen people like spectral figures walking the halls. There was one time, I don't know if I ever told you guys this, told you guys this story on any of my videos. I don't remember what year this was. I think it might have been like 2015 or 2016. My mom came into my bedroom with a stick of sage, I did not know what this was at the time, and just was smoking the corners of my room. I said, Mom, what are you, do what are you doing? She was like, don't worry about it. I said, oh, okay. And so she just kept taking this, like, burning bundle of, like, to me, what looked like grass. And I was like, okay. And just was kind of waving it in all four corners of my room, and I was like, oh, maybe it's, like, one of her, like, essential oils things. It's just to make the room smell good, I guess. No, she was literally burning sage in my room as if she was trying to protect me from some sort of spirit, and that terrifies me. I don't understand. I still don't to this day understand why. I'm scared. Um, I know I told you guys in my uh, um, birthday haul video last year that uh, little Hey Siri incident. That was terrifying. Uh, it was really scary. So I'm convinced that, yes, indeed, my house may have been... I'm getting anxious again. No more ghost talk. I'm like looking behind me now. It's terrifying. So anxiety. Don't like that. Um, 
It's gotten significantly better ever since I started this channel. Actually, you guys have helped me so much in being able to do simple things like talk to strangers. Not Don't talk to strangers. Like, I, I'm not aiming my channel at children. Again, I just want to preface because the new rules are scaring me. But don't don't talk to strangers, okay? Like, it's you can like have a friendly conversation, but like don't don't talk to don't talk to weirdos. Be safe. I love you. Um, but yeah, um, like when it comes to like making phone calls or like when I was working at um a grocery store, <laughs> I guess uh talking to customers was a lot easier and things like that. But now it's like I can I I used to not even be able to do these voiceovers. I turn it on and then I'd get so scared and I'd have to like take deep breaths and then film it and now it's just like I can turn on the mic and talk to you guys so um you guys have done a number on uh my mental health in a good way so thank you guys for that um the last two are sort of uh tied together and that is something that I call fog brain and not being able to find my stuff so, um, fog brain is uh, a term that I use to refer to when I can't think. Um, I get these, like, uh, instances where, like, it doesn't matter what I'm doing or what I'm talking about and how interested or disinterested I am, even if I know, like, I can feel it in my bones, like, I'm shaking and I want to, like, talk, I want to, like, talk about something. I can't because I can't think. I can't form cognizant like thoughts. It's just like a jumble of like, it's it's literally like trying to see through fog and like look for the words that I'm trying to say, and I just can't because it's too thick. And so I just have to like look at images or like words or something and be like, what am I trying to say right now? I can't think, and it gets really aggravating at times. So if you get like this and you have tips on how to uh, help your brain work good, please hit me up so I can figure out how to fix my brain. <laughs> um, and then the last one, obviously not being able to find my stuff, is um, pretty obvious. I hate it when I can't find things, especially because like I told you guys, I have been trying to be more organized and even when I organize things, I will lose them. Like I will see, um, I had my, the old tablet pen, the one that I was trying to use on my XP pen thing, the button for like the right click was falling off and I watched it fall off and I just couldn't find it anywhere. I was like, I watched it hit the ground in exactly this spot. I moved my entire desk. It's gone. I don't know where it is. I can't put it back and it's really annoying. And uh, I lost my phone this morning. I fell asleep with it. So it was in my bed somewhere. I made my whole bed and then I was like, where? is my it wasn't in my bed at all it was literally underneath my bed on the floor and I was like great that's awesome I hate that so uh yeah I just don't like not being able to find my things it's really annoying and it like makes me anxious and I like can't do anything until I find the thing that I'm looking for or until I entirely entirely give up so this video is getting a little on the long side um, getting a little rambly so I'm going to rush through the what's in my bag portion of this video so the first thing I want to say is you guys should check out muzzum.com I will put a link in the description but uh, they have these amazing 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 backpacks um, I've talked about them before on my Instagram you guys saw back in June I uh, posted a little picture where I had the backpack and everything that I had taken to um, the hotel when I was going to a Pride event with my friends. I had like my iPad, my Apple Pencil, my Roku, like three different outfits, my laptop, my iPad, did I already say my iPad? My DS, my phone, my just everything, including all of my chargers and like all this junk that I didn't need was all able to fit inside that backpack and I was able to zip it, which is very important. Um, but yeah, it just fits so much stuff and it's very lightweight and comfy and cute. It's literally so cute. It's got little leaves all over it. I'm obsessed with it. And I also have an affiliate link that I can link to you guys if you want 20% off of your, um, backpack orders you can use the code SciArts20 and get you your travel backpack it's really really convenient for when I am 
uh, traveling, whether that's to like the convention, I used that to hold a whole bunch of stuff. And the only things that I didn't put in there were big boxes that were bigger than the backpack, which I obviously couldn't put in there. But I was able to fit like all of my um, safes and my uh, supplies for like um, the my br uh, there's the fog brain, um, like all of this stuff that I needed for the shelving, I guess, to display everything, and pens and pencils and stuff for the sketch commissions that I was doing. It just it fits a lot of stuff, and it makes my life so much easier. So again, you can use the code SciArts20 to get 20% off of your order, and also um. It takes a little bit to get to you, so if you're ordering a new backpack for the school year, I would totally recommend um, getting them now rather than later so that it gets to you on time. And they're really amazing. They are a little bit on the expensive side. They're about $60, but like, so is a Jansport, so you might as well get a cute backpack and use my 20% off code, get it a little cheaper, and help your boy out. It's really awesome. And so now we are getting into what I put in my bag if I am traveling to do art. So these art things, it's not like a what's in my purse video where like this is all what's constantly in my bag. It's like just things that I put in there when I'm ready to go and make some art. So obviously I have my iPad and my Apple Pencil because those are the quickest and easiest things to make art with. It's really simple, just two things, and I don't need like water and pencils and papers and erasers. I'll still bring that anyway. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I just, I like bringing those. It's really simple. Um, I bring my DS. My DS isn't necessarily an art supply, but sometimes I want to play Zelda, and so I bring it. <laughs> um, I also have my watercolors and my water brush pens just because um, as much as I love my Copics, I also almost have all of the Copics, and so that makes it really, really hard for me to decide, okay, what colors do I want to bring? What colors do I want to use? Because I'm not like the beautiful Fran nerd. I don't have like a consistent color palette that I use most of the time so I can't like look at my Copics and be like well this is the same six that I love to use for all of my posts so this is what goes in my pencil bag it's no it's like I have 200 markers what am I gonna draw today I don't even know what I'm gonna draw I don't know what colors I'll need so I get watercolors because that's essentially like bringing all my Copics because I can mix colors and I don't have to worry about bringing so many markers <laughs> um and then water brush pens are obvious. I need water brush pens to use the watercolor. Um, we have my phone and then some little bits and bobs like my pencils, erasers, sharpeners, um, mechanical pencils, color pencils, whatever. Those are just things that I use for like reference images or for sketching or for obvious erasing or for like fine details and uh, light shading in some of my illustrations because obviously that's what I use for everything. So if I'm making art, that's what I need. <laughs> So that is it for this week's video, or I guess it's not this week, sorry, I'm still getting used to the um, <laughs> twice a week uploads I suppose, so that is it for today's video. Um, I'm sorry I rambled so much in this video, but I did want to leave that stuff in just because it's like, obviously it's a meet the artist video and I didn't want it to be super like polished and rehearsed and impersonal because then it's like it, you're not really meeting the artist if you're not seeing how the artist usually acts I suppose so that's why I uh, tended to ramble and jump around a little bit normally I'd edit that stuff out but again I thought it would be interesting for you guys to see how I would talk to like a friend or my family or something like that. So I hope it wasn't too annoying and I hope you enjoyed this video. I want to give a big shout out to my patron Elise Thompson. Thank you so so much for continuing to support me every single month. You are the best. If you want to see your name at the end of these videos, be sure to check me out on Patreon at patreon.com slash Simon AES Arts and you can also get cool prizes like commission discounts tiled wallpapers, illustrated wallpapers, uh, early video releases, free line art, just things like that. And uh, again, don't be afraid to go check me out at patreon.com slash Simon AES Arts, and I will see you guys next Wednesday or Sunday. We'll see. Bye.